Hey guys, this is my final Kona video. I'm already back home, but here are some post-race thoughts. It took me a bit, little bit longer to record this video as I got really, really sick post-travel, but um, also in Kona already. So it feels like the last two weeks have just been a lot of bedtime trying to get back to health. I'm on a good way, but still not there yet. So as you can maybe see in here, um, yeah, there's still uh, some, some uh, stuff <laughs> inside of me left. But uh, we thought it's about time to yeah, recap my third place finish at the Ironman World Championships. Let's dive into the race. Race morning usually starts around three hours before the gun goes. So I had a 3 a.m. alarm, but to be honest, I didn't sleep much before the race anyway. I'm used to that. That's because of the nerves, excitement, and I don't really think it affects my performance. I was ready at 3 a.m. <laughs> I got up and yeah, got all the stuff done that I need to do before leaving. I ate my porridge, I prepped my bottles, I did a little bit of uh, you know mobility and activation um, that I like to do back home and not uh, close to the race where it's so crowded. Yeah, we picked up um, Chris Neitzat who was with us in Hawaii for the final week um, to support me. Um, as you've seen with like the, the activation stuff, but also um, a bit of um, treatment. Um, and he was yeah, one of the key supporters for race day. So it was really good for Philip to have him there as well. So we drove to the race venue and yeah, it was really cool that there were so many women on their way to the transition and to the start area. Um, there was definitely a special start into yeah our world championships and a cool vibe. Um, I was really nervous, excited. I got everything done that you have to do before an Ironman and also before Kona. That includes body marking, dropping off um, your special need bottles, um, giving some pre-race interviews in the morning. Um, I prepared as good as I could and uh, I don't try to think so much um, about an end result. It's more about, you know, being present in the moment and taking an opportunity if uh, it comes and uh, yeah, just try to give my best and uh, hopefully I will have a positive experience, you know, cross the finish line proud and with a smile on my face. And then checking that my bike is working, making sure I have the exact tire pressure that I wanted to run. Something that was special um, was that I was already wearing a cooling vest, even though it wasn't too hot in the morning. Yeah, that was uh, because um, I was in the second half of my menstrual cycle, where my body temperature is around one degree higher due to the high hormonal phase that I was in. So, as you can imagine, if you are about to race one of the hottest races on the earth, um, it's quite a disadvantage if you start with an elevated core temperature. So I knew about that fact and I knew that it might be challenging also throughout the day. So I had to make sure that even pre-race I was nailing all the cooling things I could do. So I was aware of that fact and I never had like any negative thoughts about it or feelings. I would never, you know, try to manipulate my cycle, um, you know, to be in the better phase for, yeah, probably my most important race of the year. As I always try to work with my cycle and with my body, um, you know, I, I, I just accepted this fact and knew that I had to focus on nailing a few things in order to be able to perform well. I went uh, down to the pier where we all got called up to line up for the swim start. So it was about to happen. As always, I knew the swim would be super important. Um, in Kona, it's a water start. So we all had to line up, choose our position. 
Um, and that's definitely a tricky part, especially for someone who's not so experienced uh, in swimming. We had many fast swimmers um, in this year's edition, so I knew there might be a bigger front group um, and I was of course hoping to find some fast feet. I didn't find myself in the best group, but at least um, my swim wasn't too hard. As soon as I came out of the water and saw who I was surrounded with and that neither Daniela or Anne or Kat uh, or Chelsea was with me, I knew, okay, I maybe have to do some work on the bike now. The interesting thing is it was my fastest Kona swim to date, but I still missed the big important group. So of course, there's still so much room for improvement. The crucial thing is like this takeoff and uh, finding the group um, stuff. On paper, the gap looked big, but I knew it's a long day, so it didn't shock me in any way. I just had to maybe slightly change my plan for the bike a little bit. I put on some aero calf sleeves and that worked out brilliantly. We practiced that, you know, it's not so easy to get something on when your body is wet. And then we headed out on the bike and thanks to Philip and Chris I was well informed about where I was in the race so I knew there's like this big massive group on the bike that included Daniela, Kat, Chelsea, Anne and yeah many of uh, the main contenders and unfortunately I think I was nearly three minutes behind them so I knew I had to go really hard on the bike to try to close the gap. It was for sure a motivating factor that I was actually able to come closer. So I think at around 60K, I caught them. It was definitely emotionally hard to ride past the penalty tent that I was uh, standing in in last year's race. But it was also so cool to just keep on going and knowing, you know, I'm in the race, I'm hopefully soon in the mix. So when I caught that group, I couldn't believe how, how big it actually was. I felt like this group was not working. It was a bit of a mess. And with all the hills of the Kona course, um, it's so tricky not to get a penalty when you are part of this group. I decided it's time to trying to get away from them. Yeah, it was cool that Lisa Norton and Shossel McCollin had uh, similar plans and we caught Daniela, that was cool. So at the end, there was only Taylor and Lucy still in the front. One really weird thing about the bike was definitely the bottle situation. The water bottles in Kona, they're a bit too slim for the bike bottle cages. I was aware of the fact, so I tried to put on the, like, the narrowest bottle cages that I could actually find, but they were still not narrow enough to actually hold the bottles well. So in the race briefing, the referees told us that they are aware of this fact, but they will still hand out penalties for unintentional littering. So I was so afraid to lose bottles. So there were so many situations where I just holded my bottles um, so I won't lose them. I hope that uh, they will change something for the future. I still rode the third fastest bike split. I'm super happy with that. I'm, yeah, overall, I'm really happy with my bike performance. I jumped off the bike with Lisa and Shoslin and very soon I was running in third. I promised Philip to be super patient on Ali Drive. You're very tempted to run too fast there because it's so early in the race. Ali Drive is super crowded, so you have all the support. The run part is the first part where you get handed ice cubes. This helps massively to really cool down your body. So I had like a triangle scarf uh, from Castelli um, that I could use to uh, put ice cubes in and then I could wrap it around my neck. I was really focused on getting as many ice cubes in my bra, in my scarf and into my mouth as possible. I was a bit afraid of Palani because it's so steep and last year I really felt like it broke me a little bit, but I managed Palani and uh, I knew Anna was running behind me. She was in fourth very fast. I don't know when she exactly overtook me, but it was somewhere on Queen K. I had the thought in my mind for a very short time, should I go with her or not, like try and go with her. 
but I then decided to focus on myself. I focused on fueling, cooling, keeping yeah, my head in the game, but it was so much easier in comparison to last year where my whole race experience and mindset was so negative and frustrated. It's a long way this marathon, it's one of the most brutal marathons you can probably do. Philip and Chris still supported me so much thanks to you guys um, and they actually were the first ones who really believed that I could catch Taylor. The second time I saw her was in the energy lab. So that was the first point where I also started to believe, okay, if I really can keep my shit together here, we can, I can maybe try and catch her. It was tough, but it was of course also so rewarding once I caught her. To run the final case, that was, that was so good. Um, my body definitely hurt. I pushed really hard, especially on the last downhill case and I was actually enjoying uh, to cross the finish line. I wanted a positive race experience, I wanted a race to be proud of and I wanted to be part of the mix of this yeah, amazing women's field and to be on the podium with Lucy and Anne and to leave so many big names behind me yeah, it was definitely, I think, the best um, I could ask for on that certain day. And I'm definitely super proud of my performance. First time on the Ironman World Championship podium. I think this will definitely influence my racing and my mental approach for the future. It was so good to celebrate at the finish line, um, you know, to hug Philip and uh, yeah, just to soak in the atmosphere and yeah, to celebrate on the podium with Lucy and Anne. Um, two Germans on the World Championship podium, I think that was definitely something that happened for the first time. Of course, I was super exhausted, but I still felt okay. Around two hours after the race, I started to feel a little bit dizzy and I got really sick and couldn't really stand anymore so I felt like you know we'll maybe lose consciousness so I lay down and they tried to bring me some food I tried to eat didn't really work till the point that I actually went back to towards the finish line where Ironman has their big medical tent yeah they had a look then they took some blood yeah to just see what was going on and I also had like such a bad um, pain in my stomach uh, it was just really weird. They gave me, um, you know, some natrium chloride. It helped a little bit to make me feel better, but not too much. After a few hours, uh, we decided that I tried to get up. Then I went back home. I remember um, getting up because I got very hungry. And I think that was the first sign of getting better. So I don't really know what it was. I think it just showed, you know, I gave everything. It was insanely hot on that day and it's just brutal for the body to perform and to stay healthy. I, I got better um, the next day. We were invited into the Four Seasons Hua La Lai to have breakfast with Bob. That was really cool, was super nice and then we started our journey back home. Um, we had two days in LA visiting Paul Ripke, that was really nice. Already over there I didn't feel like amazing but I also thought okay it's still the fatigue from the race and jet lag. So I got really sick and I spent at least a week in my bed. I guess my body just took what it needed and I have to be patient now until I'm yeah uh, fully healthy and fit again but I also want to thank you for following me on my Kona journey to yeah supporting me with liking and watching these videos so for me it's first of all time to get healthy and then I can officially start my off-season period which will probably be a few weeks long and I'll definitely try to show you what this will look like, some of the things that I was already looking forward to, you know, to do them when I get back home. So my off season will be back home and I won't uh, go away for a holiday or something. For me, the most valuable thing is actually to, to spend some time back home with my family and Nino. So yeah, make sure to subscribe to my channel to support me and to don't miss any of those future videos.